you can't you can't tell that they're there. I mean that they've been um, hidden purposefully so that the public aren't um, you know upset and annoyed by them. Um, you know, and then they're a bit of a blot on the landscape. So you can you can live here for years and not know that they exist. Um, but if you were to fly over Mendips, you'd see huge, big cavities on the map that all represent quarries, um, disused and used. And we found um, three main quarries. That's West Down Ashen, um, Halecon, which is the used one, the working one, and Fairy Cave Quarry, which is this, the most amazing magical space, which is normally gated and um, the public aren't allowed in there. I didn't want yet another art trail uh, that's a sort of sculpture trail because I've been a part of, of them many times and they're fine but you know I wanted to stay, take a step up, a stepping stone to another level um, and try something different and I, I just think um, you know art is more interesting if it's varied um, and events like that, uh, or like this, well, I just wanted it to be, you know, multimedia, multi-stranded, have a lot of layers to it. Um, uh, you know, it's got, it's got the sort of art, but it's got the science, it's got the nature, you know, so that there, there's all these uh, different aspects to it. Um, and yes, it sort of deserves to have um, a foot in, in different, um, arenas of art. So, you know, poetry is, is one way of expressing um, a, a place um, and, and thoughts and, you know, visual arts is another. So, what it, what, it, it sort of evolved actually on its own, to be completely honest. The artwork's very diverse. We have uh, sound, poetry, taxidermied, minuscule creatures, printmaking, painting, sculpture using fan materials, um, land art, collaborative sculpture and, um, and music and they are all sort of installed so that they play off each other. Um, there's a kind of strong resonance between some of the work and a contrast so visitors will you know, encounter a diff different experiences and different senses as they walk through the trail. Sunset Earth Science Centre is um, situated right next to Moons Hill Quarry, which is one of the few quarries in the country that produces basalt um, for roadstone. And it's um, Sunset Earth Science Centre is supported by all the quarries in the area um, in a, a sort of an attempt to educate the public about quarries in a good way, um, raise the profile um, and uh, their main role is to sort of you know um, teach people about geology and, um, and the quarries obviously um, and they have this beautiful lake um, next to a very wonderful sort of modern sustainable building which is again it's it's stunning it's um you know very sort of well designed um and we've put we've installed work on the lake and around the um lake in the woodland so they've got this this little woodland walk it's it's quite a sort of handleable size so our that's uh, somerset earth science center is our is our part of our first step so it, it sort of carries on throughout all the other steps of the project um, and that's where we've been um, running our workshops and our um, artist talks mainly, although we've got a couple of Black Swan Arts. My first job was as a photography teacher, or my only job. For 16 years I'd set up a department. And then when I left, it, it sort of got ingrained into me, into my bones, into my way of looking. And um, always, I have done some digital, but always tended to use film. And then when I left teaching, I did an MA uh, in photography on the land at Plymouth, with Jem Southam. 
And I heavily got into large format, medium format photography, but mainly large format. I just love the time it takes. I, I, I like to consider what I'm doing. And also, I really um, like the fact that I'm doing my locality. It's, this is my local. Um, and it's you know, the landscape where I live in and I like to breathe it and record it how I see it and how I think about it. And industrial, in, that sort of industri post industrial landscape, I find, even though you're out in the most beautiful countryside, um, it wasn't always green, pleasant land here. It was, you know, where we lived in, we live in Pretty, it was all lead mines and dark, and, and I just love this history and the thinking about the history of it. And, the, and these quarries, since I've been photographing quarries for over two years now, um, I think it's the space, it's like a cathedral. You go into this space and it's vast and it's completely man-made except the fact that the rocks are, you know, it's Mother Earth, isn't it? It's, it's the, the geological history, the, um, the evolution of our landscape and how it was made and you can read it like a book and that's why I'm fascinated by it. West Ham is quite um, ambiguous. It's got a menacing feel to it. When you sort of arrive there, you kind of feel a bit lost. You're not quite sure which way to turn. There are you know, two or three choices. Um, there's the obvious public pathway, which goes down the middle, but it's very, very long. And um, yeah, there's a as you. You get you go through the middle of it, the, the public path, and it's it's quite sort of just a lovely walk with with a river um, flowing on one side. But when you enter the, the sort of central zone, which is the cross cross crossroads, we call it, um, there's a sort of um, kind of apocalyptic feeling of um, it's a sort of post-industrial landscape that is quite disquiet disquieting. Um, and um, I don't think I'd like to be there on my own at night. There's a wonderful iconic building uh, structure that still remains called the Toast Rack, um, and it's where they, um, they segregated all the um, gravel into different sizes. Um, and there's sort of you know, remnants of machinery dotted around, and um, you know, walls have been graffitied a bit, but in a, in a good way, and it's got this real kind of um, uh, abandoned feeling but um, quite wild and um, overgrown with silver birch and ash and hazel um, and in winter it, it has a, a sort of spectacular um, show of moss um, on the ground which sort of is really bright in, in the rain um, against the purple buddleia. It's, it's extraordinary and it's used for all sorts of reasons. That's, I, I find uh, West Ham quite, um, it's got a sense of sort of underground um, activity. There's, you know, well, people have raves there, but also um, people go horse riding, people go dog walking, um, families go for you know, little day outs, um, days out. Um, and yeah, it's, it's regularly visited by just a whole range of people. Uh, Stepping Stone, it's just a, it's a sweet connection because um, I'm, I live in a village where one of the quarries uh, is situated. 
uh, and in fact they, they spread out all around me. Um, but then I've gravitated here because uh, this is my patch, you know, this is where I go and collect stone. I grew up in the Mendips um, and although I worked in sort of Crete and, and developed um, my process over there, I came back here because I knew uh, this is where I could find my source material. Um, so it's kind of, it's no accident uh, that I'll be involved in something like this, but uh, that it's, that it's um, come into being is, is just, just works a dream, yeah. Uh, I make sculpture from found stone, from limestone, uh, pieces that are just um, coming to the surface. They've uh, detached from the, from the um, from the bedrock, and as they rise to the surface, they erode, and you get these sort of flowing forms, these sort of curvy shapes. Sometimes you get sort of eye holes or belly buttons. Um, and uh, sort of cheekbones, it can be fleshy or bony um, and I kind of piece together uh, sculptures as though I'm sort of uh, restoring an antique sculpture that's that's been smashed to the to the you know four corners of the earth and I, and I, I pick pieces and, and play a sort of a big jigsaw game um, putting pieces together uh, just trying to resolve um, the sort of the, the flow and the, the feeling uh, that the, the uh, connections make. Uh, so it's a sort of game of stones where you're, you're, uh, you're, you're puzzling. Uh, and, uh, and it, but it also I find it really expressive. Um, so I'm not just putting arms and legs on, on figures, I'm, I'm uh, telling stories. Uh, and at least that's what I'm doing in my head. So I have the three P's in my work philosophy, passion, passion, protection and preservation of the environment. So I think with the environment that I'm working in, with what the materials that I'm working with, it all links in really well. Um, and as I said, giving something new life, it's the piece of stone has been quarried in a nearby quarry, brought back into this quarry, and then giving it a new life by covering it with something very natural and putting it back in a natural environment and see how it relates to where it is and what people think about it, whether it's a good talking point or not. <laughs> this is a very old traditional wet felting process, yeah. Um, in my work I tend to use a mix of very traditional things um, and try and use some new, I, new techniques as well. But I wanted to, for this project particularly, go back to um, how wet felting would have been to bring in the the um, heritage of the wool industry. With the quarries you've got both disused and working quarries still going at the moment and with the wool trade it's it's still flourishing in the area um, and the piece here actually is is literally trying to tie literally trying to tie in the two heritages together so these are all little piece of rusted implements that I've found left in the quarries when I've walked around and then I've joined them together with cords of wool. Um, so it's, as I say, literally the two heritages hanging together, really. Um, and I feel that's really important. small sort of hole in the ground with um, you know obviously great big massive machinery going all day long um, and you have this peripheral grass walkway that goes around the, um, the sort of outside of it um, which um, people can it's a public pathway so people can look down into the quarry see the quarry at work but then have this very peaceful um, walk around the edge so it's a very interesting contrast between a sort of very
countrified walk and a, an industrial um, scene below going on. I'm scratching. What am I doing? I'm um, trying to make that into this. And um, at the moment, I've got I've got a resist on here from the acid, and I'm scratching into it. So when I put this into the acid, it will etch. So what what you can't really see here, these lines, will come up quite dark. I'm just creating texture. Well, it's from this composite picture over here, which is of West Down Quarry. And actually it's a Google Earth map, which I've blown up. So it's become fuzzy, which I quite like. And put, made black and white. And um, I'm using that. So each one of these is twice the size, twice in both di dimensions like that. And I'm making 10 of these, there's 10 plates. And they're all going to be assembled together. I'm making separate ones because it's much easier to do the etching um, of them. And also I quite like the grid feeling of it. And they're going to be laid out in the quarry um, on the ground, actually on pallets. And then people can come along and make rubbings of them or stand on them or whatever they want to do with them. But it will be a map right at the centre. The centre of the quarry is there. And I've made that the centre of... This. So that's where all the stones are and where a lot of things are happening for this project. It seems, seems to me that there possibly this already existed in the earth, this beautiful formation, which, I don't know, it's just, I, I, I can't get over how lovely it is, actually. <laughs> it's just so alive. And with a quarry, you think, oh, it's stone and it's, it's been, you know, plundered and it's dead, but it's not. It's an extremely alive place. And that's, I think everyone in the project has felt that actually, you know, with the, what grows there and so on. But this is just, this is just the bones of it, isn't it? I keep thinking it's, you know, I keep wanting to call it a natural amphitheatre, but of course it's entirely artificial amphitheatre. If it was natural at the moment, I'd be some 60 or 70 feet underground. There are some, some commissions, some projects you do, you walk into a space and think, ah, I know exactly what I want to do here. Uh, not to say that the ideas hadn't been... Um, uh, swirling around for some time before that. I do a lot of GPS triggered um, soundscape work um, for the smartphone so I'm always alert to the acoustic properties and the physicality of sound uh, which as a poet I suppose I am as well. My poetry is, um, is for the voice, it's for the live voice so it's always, it is about sound. Sound and structure and um, quality, genius loci of the space, yes. I'm writing a script on um, the quarry, on stone, on this, on the particular history of this quarry, um, about strange things, like mines are really strange things. Um, you sort of look at the strata and you think of strata of history, you think of strata of words. Um, and they're very monumental as, and very have a sort of strange beauty. And the floor of this place reminds me of um, reminds me of the Serengeti or something. I've never been to the Serengeti. I haven't actually been to the Serengeti. I've been to South Africa, um, but it's a sort of almost a desert-like um, has an almost desert-like quality. You expect to see antelopes or cheetahs um, running around. So it has a very special. It's, and then you go up on top. And if you go up on top, it's as if you're sort of wandering along. And I think Martin said there was a footpath which starts 
which used to start over there before they dug the quarry and which continues over the other side. So that sort of, that sort of image of a disruption of life, a disruption of the earth, a discontinuity, a discontinuity, um, all very interesting ideas and the um, geology as well. So the work will be about geology, it will be about history, it will be about associations with big holes in the ground, um, rocks, um, different types of rocks. So I'll talk to, I think I'll bring my brother-in-law here who's a geologist. I'll make use of all my family connections, bring him here and have him explain the geology to me. But horses they did not ride, rather scaly beasts, whip-lashed, nail-hard, caricatured of great crested newts, horse large. These had been nurtured in underground stables by arrested nymphs, cordoned like sweet sour apples, till they had worked off their minimum wage zero hours contracts under a conservative government. I tears their soul nutrient, fluted stalactites, their merciful organ. They pranked their kites against the insufferable jaws of merry hell to wasted light. Exit froze their flesh and they were oxidized forever. I always feel quite comfortable when I go into Fairy Cave Quarry. It's not um, menacing, because West Down does have a sort of menacing quality. Um, and I think it actually is, it glistens whether it's in sunlight or rain. Um, it's got a, a, amazing echoes um, and puddles. It has a lot of puddles and um, sort of little mini lakes that, you know, lots of bulrushes are growing in it. So it's sort of quite quite lush in parts. And yeah, it's quite magical. It's not just the fact that it's called Fairy Cave Quarry, but I think that helps. Um, there is a sense of something kind of mysterious as going there. My work is an ongoing kind of narrative and um, the protagonists are evil skeleton fairies who have existed for about 15 years and they're kind of ever evolving and the work I make explores their behaviour and their world and their um, ambitions. So here it's really interesting to, make, to be making work for um, a space outside, which I haven't done for years and years. I did it at the beginning when the fairies were much bigger. I did a residence in the forest. But the, the, the quarry itself, the space, um, it just feels really magical and quite odd. And especially having to climb over boulders to get into it, it feels a bit naughty and kind of secret. And um, and then you're, yeah, you're, you're kind of in this amphitheater and you feel like you're being watched by the birds yeah, yeah, that's and you don't know yeah there's you know all sorts of things lurking um, and I kind of like the idea of um, being able to explore the the rock the kind of the substance of the quarry so the, the fossils and this kind of his, these historical fragments of nature and, um, and co combine that with um, myths of fairies where they were believed to once inhabit underground places and fairy mounds um, and kind of kidnap people and take them into the mounds and there's quite a few mounds here. It feels like a really great playground as well. Can you imagine brilliant adventures here? Well I haven't, I haven't really um, explored fossils before. Um, so fossilised remains of animals, 
and I'd like to bring to bring those into the narrative, those kind of the reawakening of um, creatures that once were and are no more. Um, could perhaps be mythical, a bit like the fairies. Um, but mostly I think it's about thinking about being underground. <laughs> the fairies are coming! <laughs> I like my work to be quite playful, not be too serious. Um, you know, life's quite playful. I mean, I'm just, yes, yeah. Uh, also for, for people all, all ages to sort of just open their eyes and, and feel a, a sense of wonder about the spaces that they've walked into and life, you know, just life past, present, future, really. Um, just everything about the quarries to me um, represents our origins, you know, distant past and future. You know, where are we? What, what our sort of impact on our surroundings is quite important, but how insignificant we are as well. Um, so, yes, quite playful. Um, I'm making a whole load of tentacles at the moment, which are linked to um, my interest in crinoids, and, which are sea lilies. Um, I've been a bit obsessed with the, um, the fact that these quarries take us back to um, a time, you know, a, an incredibly long ago, 250 million years ago, um, when, you know, the seabed that's now vertical was obviously horizontal and um, the only things existing in that time were sort of primitive reptiles and these sea creatures which um, were, were mainly crinoids and um, sort of coral forms like rugose corals and um, in that time the crinoids were sort of really plentiful there were about um, oh I don't know hundreds of thousands of varieties of them um, and now they still exist but not quite so many varieties um, so they've just sparked my interest. They are incredible creatures. They kind of drag themselves along the seabed, um, you know, with these kind of long tentacle arms. Anyway, so I've got this thing about tentacles being a sort of symbol of, of, the, of you know, this, this life, this time, that world. And, um, and, and also um, how, you know, forms tend to... Um, echo each other in throughout life you know there's all sorts of different species which have similarities it's a sort of um, a, a kind of um, slightly like convergent e evolution um, so yeah I'm making I hope about a hundred tentacles <laughs> which are going to form this these four these these pieces <coughs> which are sort of a mixture of um, uh, kind of look a little bit like neurons, but also crinoids and um, tumbleweeds, actually, because the quarries um, are these big kind of arid spaces that are kind of like another world, and the, um, 
that I think a tumbleweedy form um, just will look quite surreal in, in that space.